We go. Stay behind me. We're still in the same position after three years and almost two million dead, trapped by a war that's being fought on two fronts. Our soldiers paralyzed in the trenches. Gentlemen, at this morning's meeting, General Ludendorff made it perfectly clear that we have to shut down the Russian front as quickly as possible in order to transfer 80 of our divisions to the Western Front so that we can beat the British and French forces before, and I stress this, before the United States comes into the war against us, flooding Europe with her troops. In other words, the Russian question must be settled peacefully at once. I wouldn't lose any sleep over the capability of the American fighting man. That's a matter of opinion. We haven't finished discussing the Russians. The Tsar has been deposed, but the provisional government 
is keeping the country at war. Von Bergen, your ministry, which is called the Ministry of Subversion, hasn't had much success to date. You say you now have a decisive plan to get Russia out of the war. Well, let's have it. I think it best if the man whose idea this is, a certain Dr. Helfand, explains it to you himself. Helfand? The man known as Parvus? Exactly. He is a subversive Russian Jew who fled here for protection and made a success as a businessman involved in nefarious deals with foreign powers advisor to the Turkish government. He attempted to lead an insurrection in the Ukraine, which failed. He even had a plan to stir up a rebellion against the British in India. One fiasco after another. But he managed to make money out of it all. Dr. Help. Good morning, gentlemen. Sit down, Dr. Helpen. May I smoke too? Explain your plan to us. The present provisional government in Russia has no intention of making peace. But the leader of the extreme wing of the Russian revolutionaries is in exile in Switzerland. We must give him safe conduct through German territory to Petrograd in a train. Once he's there, he will lead the revolution, and once he's established a position of power, he'll sign an armistice with Germany. At least, that's what I myself feel. Perhaps I should express my views with more caution and say that he will attempt a revolution and uh, try to seize power, etc., etc. Are you talking about the head of the Bolsheviks? Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov. Known as Lenin, yes. He was at my side throughout the abortive uprisings of other times. You... What you're saying is that this man will succeed now where he failed in other times? The time is right now. It's not by any chance your obvious admiration for this Lenin that makes you so sure. My trust in him is quite rational. I know him well. How much money do you expect to make this time? I'm already a rich man, sir, and everyone knows that. Then what are you doing this for? I want my country to win the war. Dr. Helfen is a German citizen. Since when? Three weeks. Well, gentlemen, you have a lot to do. I think you should consider my proposal seriously. Our minister knows the details and where to find me. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Mr. Minister. They must accept or we'll lose the war. But how do you depend upon the intelligence of men? I have here the up-to-date balance sheets from the Stockholm Bank. You know, Furstenberg, uh, this is the most important country in the world. Everything is decided here, in Germany. Not in Russia. This revolution of peasants that Lenin is starting is merely incidental. It's here in Germany, among the working class, the world revolution will begin. I don't think that what Lenin is doing is not important, but I'm going to have to guide him very carefully in order to lay the groundwork for the big move. 
Bye. Bye. But the man has a record of defeat behind him. He hasn't had a chance to prove himself yet. But once he's on home ground, he'll move very swiftly. I'll see to that. At the moment, he's whiling away his time in Switzerland, blissfully unaware of the fact that I shall come knocking on his door and make him a present of his new destiny. <laughs> What's so amusing? The fact of you knocking on his door. It reminds me of something Lenin once said about you. Well, what was that? He called you the delivery boy of the revolution. <clears throat> Lenin said that? They say it. That's what he said. That is not true. Have you repeated this invention to anyone else? No. We're in business. Go. Have you any idea what this operation's going to cost? Not less than 50 million gold marks, that's for sure. The Germany is starving. That might be too much for the government to afford. Too much to win. Will you be handling the money? Yes, that's my condition. Lenin understands nothing about finance. Tomorrow morning in my office, we'll study the plan, when payments have to be made and so on. You go and speak to your man, Lenin, at once. Do you foresee any problems? No, certainly not. Lenin's been waiting for this moment all his life. The sooner this train sets off, the better. Who's going to be arranging the escort they'll need? Major von Planitz. Oh, a hero. Splendid. This is the most advanced type of artificial hand, sir. I hope you find it comfortable. The weather is changing. Does it hurt? Thank you, Fritz. I know you'd rather be at the front than stuck in a desk job. But you've seen enough action. However, I think I can get you out of this office if you're interested. You're from the Baltic, so you should know how to handle the Slavs. We have some Russian exiles that must be taken care of. Is this the man? Yes, sir. He threw down his rifle during the attack, and refusing to fight, he escaped. You got all? Yes, sir. You can go. I congratulate you, Captain success of your attack. Did you lose many men? 40%, sir, but we, we are 300 yards closer to Paris. We've had orders to abandon the trench you took so gallantly and withdraw to our previous position. The French are about to launch a counter-attack with tanks, and we'll never withstand it from there. Are you telling me it was all for nothing? Of course not, Captain. You took 80 prisoners? Yes, sir. This was found on the boy. Recognize it? Subversive propaganda. Calculated to cause dissatisfaction among the troops and encourage disobedience. It's an insult to the concept of patriotism. You knew nothing about it? No, sir. Not a thing. 
How was such a dangerous pamphlet able to circulate in your company without your knowledge? Don't you keep a check on the morale of your men, Captain? What they read? You know what this is, don't you? It's a copy of the so-called Quintal Manifesto. A socialist denunciation of war. Pacifist poison. Fear takes hold of a soldier when his principles are removed. When he loses respect for the true values that guide us. Doubt. That's what kindles fear. An urgent directive arrived this morning, some hours ago, from Supreme Headquarters. You are to be relieved of your command and report to Major von Planets. You go directly to our then. If I'm not mistaken, he's your previous commander. I'm to abandon my men in the middle of a battle. Why? Orders. Don't ask me. You have to write a letter to the parents of that boy, telling them he was killed heroically in action. Good luck, von Buring. the news? The American has declared war on us today. Why do we have to take a Russian revolutionary from Switzerland and deliver him in Scandinavia like a posted parcel? Because he is our secret weapon. If chaos is created in Russia, they'll be forced out of the war. Who is this revolutionary wonder? They call him Lenin. Who did you say? Lenin. I know that name. There you are. He's one of the people that signed this, this despicable piece of pacifist propaganda. What else would you expect of him? That's his job, isn't it? I must confess I'm looking forward to meeting this wizard, the dreaded Lenin, who they say is going to enable us to win the war. Where is he hiding? In Zurich. There. I've done it, Malosia. Hmm. I'm afraid it's no masterpiece. Oh, the cloth has gone so thin. It hardly holds the stitches. Anyway, I was really never very good with a needle. Oh, uh, it's fine. Fine. Uh, uh, you need something for the paper. I'll be in the library for a while. Then uh, I'll be meeting our comrades at Atlas. I'll join you later. I have to finish the envelopes. Morning, Mr. Ulyanov. Good morning. They deposed the Tsar and replaced him with a full-blooded prince. <laughs> Nothing changes. And what do the Mensheviks do? They play along with this farce of a revolution that Kerensky and all about him. We were born in the same squalid village. A calculating bastard who's miscalculated everything, a master of opportunism. Look what's happening in the world. Well, here we sit, unable to find a way to get to Petrograd. Any news of that boat to go to Odessa, Radek? Not yet. No one knows when it'll leave or when the hell it'll get there. Besides, tickets are expensive. And you know the state of our finances. The staunchest comrades are wavering. Kamenev and Stalin are talking about collaborating with the provisional government. After I wrote to them explaining there's only one path to take, power must belong to the Soviets. The Bolsheviks must have complete control. How are we ever going to get enough money together for the journey? Anyone got any ideas? I'm afraid we need somebody like Stalin. 
You remember how he used to rob banks for the party? That was fine in Georgia. There were no Swiss police to catch him. There was talk of an exchange of German prisoners of war with Russian exiles, including Bolsheviks. Yes, we've all heard about Professor Martov's plan. Everything legal and above board, just imagine. That's rubbish. Don't expect those opportunists to be pleased to see us in Petrograd. They're a lot happier while we rot away here. What do you think, Vladimir Ilyich? We'll discuss it this evening. He wasn't even listening. <gasps> Valodia! Is something wrong? No, nothing. Damn it! Close the curtains. Oh. Don't turn on the light. You work too hard. Damn it, damn it. And you don't sleep enough. Back to bed. Whoa. Take it easy. Slowly. It'll pass. Yes. It must. Yes. Oh. All right, come down. Please don't call the doctor. Nadia, please don't call the doctor. Calm down. That's it. Good. You'll be all right. Sorry. Sorry. Just lie down. All these years, it's been when the revolution comes at last. Now, it looks as though it's almost here. Perhaps I won't be around to see it. Life has a wicked sense of humor, you know. <laughs> You've waited for the revolution. And the revolution has waited for you. I wish I had your confidence. <laughs> I get it from you. Now get some rest. Melodia. I'm sorry, Velodia. Maybe there were too many years between you and me. We'll never have the opportunity of getting to know each other any better now. arrested with my friends. We were so naive, so unprepared. The judges laughed at us. I made a bomb that wouldn't go off. So the Tsar is still alive. Untouchable. You are dead, dear brother. Sasha. Do you think you have a temperature? Sasha. What? 
Don't tell the others I wasn't feeling well. Have I ever? You know, I think you're just tired. It's been such a long business. Don't worry yourself. It's just that even the most ardent of my followers would see me in a different light if he knew my health was failing and if he reached the newspapers. If, if, if. You make things much worse than they are with your ifs. Now, don't torture yourself. We have to get to Petrograd, Nadezhda. I have to find a way, somehow. Well, you will. You will, Valetia. Now, drink your tea while it's hot. Good morning, comrade. Good morning, comrades. Is comrade Leonard at home? Yes, please come in. I hope we're not disturbing him. No, 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 please come. Thank you. I'll go in and get him. In just one moment. Grim and Catherine are here. I really don't feel well enough to digest since socialists at the moment. Oh, but they're so kind. Oh, well. <clears throat> Let's see what they want. <clears throat> to what do I owe the pleasure, comrades? We have good news, great news. We are here on behalf of the German ambassador. Two officers are waiting at the border to accompany you from Germany to Sweden. From there, you will be free to travel to Petrograd. If you will come with me, the German ambassador can give you more details. I prefer to have no contact with the German ambassador, can't you tell me? There is a very good reason. The Germans reckon that Lenin can get Russia out of the war. Yes. German ambassador is expecting an urgent reply. My urgent reply is no. No? You could be in Petrograd in a matter of days. Perhaps we hadn't made that clear. It's no. If I have to accept unconditionally. Well, if, if you have conditions, let's hear them. I'll let you know in due course. This is from Comrade Helfen, whose idea this whole thing is. If you read it, you may change your mind. Parvus. More harm than good. He's an enigma. I don't know what he wants out of the revolution. But let's get to the heart of the matter. If I take this German train, all my political enemies will accuse me of being a traitor, selling out to the Germans. But can I afford to turn down any means of getting to Petrograd? It's a hell of an offer. Yes, but one that could be very costly. Unless it's not a train for Lenin alone, but a large group of Russian exiles which happens to include Lenin. Even Mensheviks? Everybody. A general repatriation. Easy to arrest one isolated man, easy to accuse him of treason, to hang him. But a whole group of people of various political affiliations, much harder. I think you found the only solution. I've called a meeting with the Mensheviks, Markov in person. He's coming here? Martov? On what basis of agreement? To negotiate, not if we're going to negotiate. We have to make sure this train leaves carrying representatives of all political parties. That is the expedient for the moment. Comrade Lenin, Professor Martov sent me. Yes? He wants you to go to him. Is Professor Martov not feeling well? No. He's in perfect health. Oh, good. Tell him I'll be along shortly. Markov maintains the Mensheviks are a vast majority. We Bolsheviks are spit in the ocean. So it's you, Lenin, who has to come to me. It's logical. Find Roblox. Comrade Lenin, you know there's 
a lot of talk. Some say that your proposal that our two parties leave together is cleverly calculated. We open the door to Russia. You come in, hiding under our overcoats. Is that it? What do you think, dear comrade Martov? I could understand an act of political opportunism. I would not like to be called a traitor. Are you prepared to risk it? The bourgeois will call me a traitor. I don't care. The people will not, and that's what matters. Compromise and contradictions exist in the fight, in life. But there is a limit. And that's what separates us, comrades. The way in which we fight. Don't lose sight of our true adversary, the system that blindly sends millions of young people to their deaths. How can socialists fight that kind of criminal folly with the immaculate conduct you impose upon them? Martov, wake up. I did. I have no wish to emulate our oppressors. First, we must destroy them. <laughs> if we use their methods, we shall always be like them. But all of us, the oppressed, have been taught by them. We're infected with the corruption they instilled into us. Do you really think that anyone who rebels is immediately transformed into some shining new man? We're not machines. It will take so long, comrade, that we may never live to see it. How many times have we discussed this? How is Nadia? Courageous, as always. What about your family? As well as can be expected. Being so far from home affects everyone. I cannot make any decision without consulting my comrades. Maybe your reply will arrive too late, after the train has already left. We have to respect the democratic rules. In any event, good luck. Martov and the Mensheviks. Difficult as ever. Any news of Rublov? We found him. He's at Adler's. Anarchists. Better lost than found. They're exiles like us, and they're not exactly anarchists anyway. They'll add to our numbers. Knowing your opinion of the revolutionary socialists, I'm very surprised that you wanted to talk to me. We Bolsheviks are revolutionary socialists too. Often it's only a matter of words. They can cause so many misunderstandings. Though, I admit, we have our differences. But perhaps the time for united action has come at last, comrade. Who gives the orders? You? You have a highly detailed plan ready, that was you. Sometimes, Rublov, you remind me of my brother, Sasha, the idealistic terrorist. He was hanged for it. So presumably you consider he was wrong. He was my model for commitment, for strength of character, not for politics. When he was executed, I knew his strategy was wrong, brave but naive. I realized that victory lay in a different direction. Namely? Organization. Maybe I'm wrong again, Comrade Rubloff, but that's what I believe. The struggle is what we have in common, and that's why I'm asking you to join us. Put myself in the hands of the Germans, those underhanded, rotten, dirty, militaristic bastards. You trust them? Yes. Because they're doing this for purely selfish motives, as we are. No. I refuse to be used as merchandise the enemy can barter with, holding a gun to my head. Any of you prepared to go along with Lenin's offer?
Good luck, comrade. Good luck to you all, comrades. I hope you get to Petrograd. So grim and flattened. It's a list of our conditions for taking the trip. I want them made known to the German ambassador. They also want to take a group of women and children on the train. 30 or 40 people in all, Mr. Ambassador. That's all right. Since Berlin keeps bombarding me with orders to send them off, two officers are waiting for them at the border already. Go on, what else? They insist on paying for their tickets. <laughs> I like that. Granted. They're bringing their own food for the journey. In other words, they want no favors from their enemies. Granted. When will they be ready to leave? As soon as they've gathered enough people together. But what about peace? Can this Lenin guarantee us peace? Has he made a statement? No statement. Go on. They don't want any German officers to escort them. These people are Russians. We are at war with Russia. They want to cross our country without an escort? Certainly not. All right, we might as well resign ourselves to having an escort. What about the Mensheviks? What was their answer? Martov has to consult his comrades. Martov is going to say no to anything we might suggest or offer. If he isn't with us, then he must be against us. He'll probably tip off his friend Kerensky. You know how he is. Look out. Here come the Bolsheviks. Throw them in jail. Hang them. We'll see. <laughs> the general feeling is that it could be very dangerous. A lot of people are afraid to get on that train. So we're going ahead anyway, even if no one joins us. Not the dashing heroes, Kartanov. Not the dashing heroes. I had to reach Petrograd in one piece. There are only eight of us. Too few. Has anyone thought of asking Abramovich of the Bund? The Jews? Well, they're mostly Poles and Lithuanians, but they might come along. They share a lot of ideas. Why not our train? Speak to him and get in touch with all the others at Geneva, Berman, Lausanne. Harvis is waiting for you across the border at Zingen. Harvis. I wonder whose side he's on this time. Wherever there's gold and champagne flowing. And beautiful women, of course. <laughs> you go. Me? I'm an Austrian citizen. I, a deserter. If I so much as poke my nose across the border, they'll clap me in irons. Ask the German embassy for a safe conduct pass to Radek. Very well. One. Parvis has the Germans in his pocket, which means he holds a decisive position in this matter and must not be allowed to suspect for a second that we intend to do without him. Two. He must be led to believe that I cannot contact him personally because it could damage me politically, so... He must be patient. That's all. Has it ever occurred to you that Parvis might have organized all this just to discredit you? It would be just like him. There's little doubt our friend Parvis has a pretty warped mind, but I think that's going too far even for him. No, I think Parvis simply wants to be the one backstage who pulls the strings, but we are more than puppets, comrades. <laughs> are we not? You've sent so many cables to our comrades, inviting them to join us on this journey. But there is one you've overlooked. Who do you mean? Inessa. Inessa. Why leave her out after all the years she spent with us? I've written to her once or twice over the last couple of years, but I never had a reply. She's drifted away. People do. Oh, this is different, isn't it? You can't summon up all our old comrades and ignore Inessa Arnold. I'd be happy if Inessa came back to us. She deserves her place. After all, she fought and suffered just like us. She went to prison too. Give me some change. I'll send her a cable. Buy some bread on the way home, if you, if you have any left. All right. Thank you.
bad news, Madam Armand. Help me to pack, Tilda. I have to go to Geneva. Will you be gone long, Madam? I may never come back. what we do with children like you where I come from. We eat their bones and all. I'm the big Russian bear. <laughs> today. Has he heard from Zurich? He's in there with Olga. Huh? So, you got a cable from Lenin too, did you? Did I get a cable too? I, Misha Tuskagaya, was the first to get one. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Olga Kapinski? Here I am, dear comrades, Alex Olga. Misha! <laughs> Misha, we're going home. Isn't that wonderful? I'd given up hope long ago. Oh, just think. Mother Russia. Without the Tsar. What difference does it make? There's a prince at the head of the government. How long will it be before the Romanovs are back in power? Lenin and his comrades will sweep that rubbish out soon enough. The rubbish has done the sweeping up until now. Oh, leave him alone, Misha. Can't you see what a pessimist he is? He probably doesn't want to lose his comfy shop. I'm not going anywhere, I tell you that. What? Comrade Lenin tells you to go, and you want to stay here. Don't you start telling me what to do, young man, and put your jacket on. Now get back to me. You've become a Swiss capitalist. The Swiss gave us shelter. Help you, madam. Who are you? I've never seen you here before. I'm new. Are you familiar with the shop yet? But if there's something in particular that you want, I, I can call Mr. Kapinski. Perhaps you better. Listen to me. First, you must go to Zurich and no. hear what Lenin has to well, say. He's not going to talk me into There's it. There's a lady out there. She's very unusual. I I'm not quite sure what she wants. She... Vanessa! Oh. Vanessa, how wonderful to see you. More oh, beautiful, beautiful than ever. Take with my old friends. Vanessa? Yes, Vanessa Armand in flesh and blood. The lady you always worked with Lenin and Nadia Krupskaya? Yes, yes. Oh, you got it too. Welcome, dear. I thought she was just another customer. Inessa, what have you decided? Where's my bedroom? Down the corridor. Oh, thanks. It's all a bit uncertain at the moment. More than uncertain. I'll go to Zurich with you. In your heart of hearts, if there's a chance, do you want to go back? Don't press her. Oh. Home? It would be wonderful. We'll see. Who is this young man? A good comrade. A new recruit? He's David Sunyashvili. We can trust him completely. Ah, Georgian, huh? From the mountains. Greetings, comrade David. Greetings, Inessa Armand. So, we'll keep in touch. Oh, dear. My hotel is quite far from here. My suitcase is heavy. Oh, I'll get oh it. no, I didn't mean you... Strong. Thank you, comrade from Georgia. To look at her, you'd think she was some delicate lady from Paris. <laughs> no one would ever suspect that she was a hardline revolutionary wanted by the police. And she's been in prison. But I can't believe what some people say about her. What? 
that there was more between her and Lenin than just politics. Gossip. In such a peaceful setting, it's hard to believe the world is being ravaged by war. What are you doing in Switzerland, David? I didn't want to fight the Tsar's war, so I deserted. And then I tried to rob a bank with a couple of friends to finance our terrorist cell. I know someone from your part of the country who's very good at that sort of thing. Comrade Stalin. We have almost the same name. His name is Dughashvili and mine is Suliashvili. But that's where the similarity ends. Our bank robbery went badly. I managed to escape, but my two friends were killed. I was oh, on the run for six months. And finally, I came here. What made you stay? This is where Comrade Lenin lives. I see. Did you ever go to Zurich to meet the great man in person? I couldn't just turn up. You knew him really well, didn't you? We shared the bitter bread of exile. Do you think I should return to Russia with the rest of you? He called you, didn't he? You did get a cable. I could go back to Paris. I was born there, you know. My parents were not at all revolutionary. Guess what they were? Singers, actors. <laughs> Would you believe it? Madam? Well, Comrade David, I'll think about it. Thank you. Rosa Luxemburg still in prison. That's what I thought. They've really got it in for her. Just have a little walk in the garden, would you, my love? I shan't be long. Welcome, Major von Planets. It's a great honor to meet such a gallant soldier. Please sit down. This, I take it, is Captain von Döring. You must taste some of this excellent wine. It's so hard to resist. Well, gentlemen, it looks as if our little project is about to take shape. There has been one change in the original plan. It's been agreed. Lenin won't be traveling alone, but with uh, some other Russian emigres. How many? About 30. He'll be less obvious in a crowd. It's rather shrewd of him, I think. Have you been to Zurich yet to make arrangements? No, Lenin will be coming here in a little while. Here? Yeah. Has he already received his pass? Oh, yes, from my instructions. Dr. Helfand, the gentleman you were waiting for has just arrived. Where is he? Upstairs. Is he in a private room? Yes. It's him. So, excuse me, gentlemen. Bring him here so that we can meet him. Well, he's only expecting to see me. He's rather temperamental, I'm afraid, rather unpredictable. I think it would be better if you just left it to me. on weight. I wasn't expecting a clown. Well, Lennon decided it would be unwise to be seen in the company of a cigar-smoking capitalist of German nationality, so he sends his excuses. I'm sure you understand. If I hadn't become a German citizen, I would have none of the influence which I possess today. Lenin knows that it's my talent for timing which will enable me to offer him success on a golden platter. Lenin knows how much he owes you. So I have to talk to you. Hmm? 
Well, this journey's only the first step. I've planned many more for him. Well, obviously you'll have many things that you have to do with him, but discreetly, of course, huh? What kind of a Jew are you, Radek? I could ask you the same thing, huh? You belong to that class of untrustworthy, badly dressed, unwashed, stinking people, which I can't stand. And then you must belong to another kind, hmm? People like you who profit from the misfortunes of others. Just take a look at yourself, the living justification for anti-Semitism. At least you have a ready retort. I like that. Maybe I can use you. Which is more than can be said for most of the men in sycophants. Zinovia, for example. I was an absolute non-entity, wouldn't you agree? Mm hmm. I hear Inessa Armand has reappeared on the scene. The great man's inspiration. Well, as long as there aren't any complications, I suppose. You think there might be? Let's not get sidetracked, huh? How much cash have the Germans promised us? The Kaiser's finance minister still hasn't recovered from the shock of being told the sum. Which is? Hmm? Enough. It'll be in the papers. How are you having it paid? Well, through my agency in Copenhagen, or Stockholm, or wherever it was convenient. Do we... do we get the whole amount, or...? Radek, you're obviously unfamiliar with the workings of finance. Shall we go? You'll receive slices of the cake at regular intervals, but I should like to see Lenin as soon as possible to find out how this money's going to be spent. I'll be in touch. Oh. Is Lenin as avid as ever about reading newspapers? Yes, he is. You see, we have trouble getting these German newspapers in Switzerland. Are you Mr. Ulianov? Uh, no. This is Mr. Radek, one of the men closest to Lenin. Why didn't Mr. Ulyanov, Lenin, come himself? Comrade Lenin will not enter German territory unless he is protected by extraterritorial immunity. This will be resolved as soon as possible. There are political reasons. The preparations are rather complex. But rest assured, Lenin will be there. I'll just see Mr. Braddock to the door. What do you suppose he means by political reasons? He didn't suspect anything, then. I think he'll be all right till Stockholm. But whenever the subject of money comes up, he dodges all the questions very nimbly. What I gather is that the Germans will be supplying the instruments and he'll be conducting the orchestra. I don't like the idea of him leading us by a rope around our necks. Which he can pull tight any time he feels like it. Why don't we get rid of him at the start, huh? Derail him, so to speak? I'll tell you why. If he turns against us, you might easily persuade the Germans that he could take my place. That corrupt man. <laughs> Absurd. Who's Lenin to a German? No, we have no alternative but to play along with our impresario until we're through Germany. We can start packing. Mother, where is Russia? Far away. Are we going today? Will it take long to get there? Aren't you ready yet? Yes. You'll make us late. You know I want to be the first to get there. No chance. Radek is always first. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, that pole always beats you to it. Why did Lenin send him to sing and not you? Lenin sends Radek on errands. He saves me for more important things. Radek's got him where he wants him. I am Lenin's right arm, his natural successor. Unfortunately, he's not in good health. He's sick? What's the matter with him? He doesn't want people to know, so forget what I said, all right? Is that all you're taking with you? Bread and a change of clothes. That's all I need. I have to say hello to the Jewish group. Comrades, may I greet the Socialist Bund? Oh, Inessa! 
Are you going too? Maybe. My wife this is, is sick, David. so I can... He's Hello, David. Hello. Hello. William, you've grown up. Are you really a comrade? <laughs> <laughs> what else should I be? <laughs> Hello, David Davidovich. Oh. <laughs> Olga? Where's Alex? Mr. Karpinski's not coming. Where's Misha? He disappeared this morning. We have to pay for our tickets. That's what old man Lenin decided, but I cannot afford it, Olga. The Jewish bull will pay for you, at least till Zurich. Come with me. <laughs> Your husband is probably the only one with any sense anyway. I'll forget him. What are you hiding under there? Oh, it's nothing. Something personal. I... I swore that one day I would fly this from the top of the Winter Palace. <laughs> from the top of the Winter Palace? You're easily satisfied. <laughs> he wouldn't be much of a young man if he didn't aim high. <laughs> Comrades! He wants to fly this at the top of the Winter Palace! Goodbye, Geneva. Goodbye. You took me in when I was hungry. I won't forget you! What's he really like? Who? Well, Misha calls him old man. Some people call him uncle. Lenin, what's he like? Not now. We will have plenty of time to talk. Don't forget your pills. Finger. There. Please. Almost grown fond of this room. It served its purpose. I wonder if we'll ever have a place of our own. I'll carry these. You take the rest. Come on. Shall we call a carriage? It's not far. All right. Yes, we'll call a carriage. Can we afford it? Madam Nadia, I baked you some biscuits for the trip. Oh. To wish you luck. Thank you. Uh, camera, I've put some books aside for you. Here, you'll find what we've been talking about in these. I, I want you to have them. Thank you. Please leave tomorrow so I can finish your shoes. Uh, I have to go today, my friend. There's no train for us tomorrow. Mr. Julianov, Mr. Julianov, stop. Stop them. The soldiers must revolt. Throw away their guns. The killing has got to stop. We've had enough. We'll stop it. Thank you. I've often wondered what the people of our new world should be like. It seems to me you'd be the perfect model. And a man like you cannot go around in hobnailed boots. Wait another day. Just one. You can send them to me one day. Goodbye, my friend. I'm deeply grateful to you for all you've done. Many of the time, you've kept the wolf from our door. Thank you. Can I help you? No, no, no. Read the books. You're fine, Telegram from Mr. Lebron. Telegram from Mr. Lebron. Group over there. Ah, oh, the most important passengers. Hello. Come with the social democrats. 
We're missing. The Geneva group. But there's still time. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you. Hello, my friend. You made it come. Well, this is the day. Come the great day has arrived. Yes, my dear. Hello, coming. Ah, can you travel in that condition? I want my baby to be born in Mother Russia. It's up to us what kind of a world your baby's born in, my dear. Comrade, uh, my wife has just come out of prison. We are coming with you. Your wife's a champion. A champion. Greetings, Comrade Lenin. Comrade. So good to Comrade. The... Comrade, good to see you. Hey, do Mr. Cook, yes. Comrades! Hey, do the great Mr. white bear is writhing in agony. And we are here to give it the coup de grace! Bang! Crazy. <laughs> Hello, here. Call for the carriage. Call for the carriage, please. <laughs> You're with Goodbye, us. I always said. If Lenin calls me, I'll follow him to hell if necessary. I may be taking you to hell, my friend. Where's Karpinski? He may come on later. Uh -huh. Or he may not. This is David Suryashvili. Our new recruit. Ah, David. I've heard good things about you. I'm so glad you're here. Are you coming with me? Has it been good welcome? Welcome. Thank you. We're going home. But I want to come back. But it's a Yes, you were. I'm so glad you're coming with us. We consider it our duty. Obviously, we will be. Comrade Lenny. Monsieur Loyal. Comrade Gilbo. Here it is in writing. We will be traveling. With the sanction of the International Socialist Society. This will be a great help. I'm deeply grateful to you both. Ah, excuse me, please. I must say hello to Comrade Omar. Now we're all together again, ready to do something very important. So good to have you back, Inessa. Ah, oh, Inessa. That's made a few trips in its time. Nadia, look who's here. Nadia, Inessa, Nadia. I'm so happy to see you. Are you? Yes. Comrade, uh, excuse me. That German, Oscar Blum, he says he wants to come with us. That man's a spy. Well, tell him very politely that he can't. Very well. They're all waiting for you to say a few words to us, comrade. Comrades! Quiet, quiet! You can speak! Quiet, everyone! Exile is over. We're going home. I can't guarantee that we will get to the borders of our homeland. I can't guarantee that the provisional government will let us in if we do. It's a risk we have to take. There's a revolution going on in Russia. <laughs> Middle class revolution in which we have been unable to participate, but we intend to collaborate with the provisional government and offer our contribution to the progress of our people. Yeah. Who are those people? They're not Swiss. Look at them. Their faces. Their clothes. Expect they're foreigners, Slavs or Jews. I know. You would have liked to hear a far more inflammatory speech from Lenin. Something like, 
Perensky, watch out. We're coming to cut your throat. Sometimes, even great men have to tread softly. Don't let them provoke you under any circumstances. Comrades, don't let them provoke you. Don't let them provoke you. Don't let them provoke you. You traitor, you should be ashamed of yourself. Three, you German bastard! Order. Our brothers face slaughter by the Germans, and you knife them in the back. What was your price, traitor? Oof. How much did they pay you? How much did they pay you? Come and answer! Come on, come on! You them bastard! The train's got to leave. These seats are all taken. You David. This to me. This is public transport. You take your hand. You take, take you your hand. You came from. I'll report you. Take your hand. I'll report you for this. You will hear the whole I warned you. That is no shit. What kind of socialist are you? You're not so for this. I'll teach you a lesson you won't forget. Goodbye, dear comrades. Goodbye. You can always depend on me. Always. If there's anything I can do. train with the Russians. I'll inform the German border. Ah, the revolutionaries. What <laughs> <laughs> you knew that? I came to the United States. I've been to the German States. You're welcome. What's that? Biscuits. I would say. Confiscated. Confiscated? My wife is crazy. What that devil is he talking about? Biscuits? What do you mean? How can you say that? Any of you who has animal goods in your luggage must hand them over at once. Those failing to do so will be arrested. Wait a moment. These people have got to travel all the way across Germany. And they won't find anything to eat on the way. Germany is starving. Exactly, Herr Platten. My way we can do that. What are we going to do? What we cannot what food accept this food. Herr Platten, I don't know what things are like in Russia, but explain to these people that here in Switzerland, the law is the law. Here you are, officer. Can they rally? We 
wouldn't like to deprive our Swiss friends of their daily bread. Franz, get the basket. Comrades, eat what you can. Place your food in the basket. I'll cable the minister and have you demoted for this. Go ahead. There's your secret weapon. isn't it? <laughs> Wrong. Uliano. Which of you is Uliano? Speak up. I'm Uliano. Your papers. Step forward. According to our agreement, you will refer to Herr Platten if you have anything you wish to communicate with me. Captain, I'm Fritz Platten. Can I be of any assistance? Possible. Men to the left, women and children to the right. What for? Don't argue. To facilitate identification. Please, hurry up there. Over here. Please line up here. Your documents will be returned to you as soon as we're out of German territory. Number one. Number two. How much is the ticket? Thirty-two francs each. But Vladimir each. The Swiss comrades collected a thousand francs for this journey. Nadia, give the man sixty-four francs. Now, can we get on the train? Comrades, I propose that Comrade Lenin should have the compartments entirely to himself. I can't accept privileges. You have work to do. And this will do as an office and for meetings, too. Tell him, Nadja. Oh, if that's what everybody thinks, who am I to disagree? Of course. Inessa, you come with us. This way. Vladimir Yelich, huh? Major von Planitz asks if you would kindly go to him. He wants a word with you. Mr. Rilliano, I hope you have nothing against posing for a photograph with me as a souvenir. I'd rather not. I realize you're afraid the picture might circulate, but I promise I'll keep it for myself alone. 
I wouldn't like to think you doubt the word of a German officer. <laughs> You've got your photograph. Mr. Ulyanov, I'm most grateful. Not at all. What's the piece of chalk for? This? Well, uh, let's say it's a guarantee of extraterritoriality. Get in the train, I'll show you. Get in the train, you'll see. This is the dividing line. Your extraterritorial rights end here. From this point on, the carriage is German, so you must remain behind this line and we here where we are. Mr. Platten, you're in charge of these people, so make sure they obey the rules. They're already in Germany. They'll be in Petrograd in a few days while we sit here waiting for permits. The man plays at politics as if we were playing roulette. He risks everything. A calculation that could win him his revolution if we don't stop him, and it is our duty to warn Petrograd and Kerensky. All right, let's not get thrown by Lenin's initiative. But it's time we got a move on. Why don't we ask the Germans for a train too? They can't refuse. Yes, we, must get we have to go back soon. <laughs> Does he only think of the revolution? I know what you meant, David. I'm a terrible tease. It's a pity Kerensky beat him to it. Kerensky and his provisional government. You call that a revolution? Well, take over if you prefer it. Yes, but with a prince in power. What kind of change is that? When Lenin gets there, things will be different. Of course they will. But do you realize how few we Bolsheviks are, David? And he is tired, running out of steam. <sighs> Don't take any notice of me. I've reached the age of doubt. That's all. It's chilly.
if you have doubts, why did you come on this train? Do you know how many children I have? Five. They're in Moscow, and I haven't seen them for several years. Four are my husband's, and the last is his brother's. So you see, I'm what you might call a rather stormy lady. Good morning. Alodia would like a word with you. We have some tea. Nadia. Which one of you decided to send the telegram? I did. Why? Why not? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Have you known Inessa long? No. Is she still married? Oh, yes. He's a very rich man. She left him years ago to follow Lenin. They lived together quite a long time, you know, in Paris. What about Nadia? Oh, she was there too. Lenin never left her. It was a menage a trois, politically, I mean. Inessa comes from a theatrical family, speaks perfect French, so she was a great success at the rallies in Paris. I don't know how close her relationship was with Lenin. Is that what you wanted to know? Hmm. Me? No. I don't see what that has to do with anything. What happened to that red beret of yours? Your here comes Inessa hat. I left it in Geneva. Any news of your family? Not lately. Ines, I've noticed... You don't seem so happy to keep us company anymore. I admire you both and care for you as much as ever. It's only that sometimes I feel tired. A bit jaded. Now? When we're about to do... What we've waited so long for, together. I feel old. Volodia, Inessa is now a lady with a heavy heart and little will to fight. We're going to renew the promise of paper as soon as we get there. I'm working on material for the new Pravda. I'd like your opinion. You have Nadia and Radek. You always liked his style. Best reporter we have, you said. Even if he is a little crazy. You have something he hasn't. Political intuition. Why do you think I kept you so close to me? Read it, then we can talk. Martha, look, soldiers and guns. that confounded French song at once! Comrades, please be so kind as to stop it. Salut, salut à vous, avec vos gestes magnifiques. 
opinion, Matov is a coward. No. You're wrong. Don't I'd keep rather marry a doctor. You know, we all I was looking for you. So full of doubt. What a long face. So, the only reason you're here is to see your children in Moscow. Isn't that a good enough reason for you? Your Inessa Armand, for God's sake. I'm not that important. We are all expendable. All except one, that is. That's not true, and you know it. The others will be relieved when I'm gone. How can you say that? What can they have against you? They feel that I might be a bad influence on Lenin. We're not there yet, but they are already jostling for power. They fear his implicit faith in me. I could make trouble for them. He has sensed that I'm about to leave the nest, and he cannot conceive of any of his brood taking flight. He knows where and how I can be useful. He always was a shrewd organizer. He wants me to read his first article for the party paper. This is a ploy to entice me back. What are you doing? This is written by Lenin. Don't you want to read it? I have. It's wonderful. I'm not against him. He's a great man, perhaps. But I don't intend to go back to being constantly at his beck and call. But if he has such faith in you, how can you say that? Isn't his faith enough? What more do you want? Stopping. Orders. Can we get some food? The children are hungry. So are we. Thank you. Deputy Yats. Morning, sir. And that's my colleague, Deputy Rankin. Good morning, Major. Mr. Janssen and Mr. Renke, socialist deputies of the Reichstag, are authorized to speak with Mr. Ulyanov for a few minutes. Your government has forbidden us any contact with Germans. Don't talk rubbish. We know Lenin very well. And we know you. <coughs> Comrade Lenin sent me to tell you he doesn't want to talk to you. We would like to discuss Lenin's manifesto and what he intends to do. Why? Well, we are socialists too. Yes, we are socialists. You should know that. Really? Yet you voted in favor of funding the war that has turned the world into a bloodbath. It was our duty to the fatherland. Then go back to licking the Kaiser's boots. I will not permit you to speak of His Majesty the Kaiser in that fashion. That's enough. Don't argue. Lenin will not talk to you, so the matter is closed. I will report to my superiors. He can't do this to us. You tell me. What them. kind of a socialist are you if you can still talk of the fatherland? You're nothing but buffoons. Just like the rest of the Reichstag. So you got rid of those German socialists? 
They left with their tails between their legs. In that one. A word, please. Did you hear that? They insult you German politicians, virtually spit in their faces. They make fun of the Kaiser. My they orders are to escort these people, and I don't give a damn about deputies of the Reichstag. If you want things to go smoothly between us, don't start getting sensitive about totally irrelevant matters. Is that clear? Working for peace is one thing, but printing this in the party's official paper, isn't it dangerous? There's no time to lose. Wouldn't you agree? The Patriots will have a field day. Defeaters, traitors, German agents, the usual smears. An immediate and separate peace with Germany is the only way to overcome Kerensky and his cohorts. It's a risk, a mortal risk, but we have no choice, surely. You don't want me to falter at this most crucial moment. Surely you don't want to change the name of the party at this most crucial moment. We have to break with the past. If we continue to present ourselves as social democrats, we'll be lumped together with Pekanov, Kowski, and Martov. Think of that. People who maintain the war must go on? No. Social Democrats, we fought for that name. Many of us suffered and even died for it. No, Volodya. That name is an integral part of the very core of the proletarian cause. That name, dear girl, is a fiction. Hiding what? Reformists and capitalist puppets. Is that what you think? A change is necessary. Have you told our comrades? I will, before we get to Petrograd. I need you. I'm going to need you very much when we get to Petrograd. If you're with us, with Nadia and me, like the old days, I'll be able to cope with what lies ahead. Where would I stay in Petrograd? My home's in Moscow. And if I stay, what would be my role, my position? I'd be putting you on the Central Committee. So far, it consists of two people, Zinoviev and myself. But when we get to Petrograd, we'll be joined by Kamenov, Rikov, and Bukharin. What could I contribute to the Central Committee? You'd be a cohesive element. You'd hold us together. And you've earned it, Inessa. Having a woman on the committee would encourage all women. You'd, you'd represent them. And you know how important I think women are to the structure of the party? What about Comrade Kolontai and Nadia? They deserve this kind of recognition. Not just my wife. Surely, you don't want me to be accused of sentimentalism or nepotism? Must be Frank first. Might be able to get some food here. Frank first. I hope we find food. Hey, Fritz, we need something we can get our teeth into. Do those crowds want us to die of hunger or what? And I hope they don't expect us to fast all the My way to Sweden. My wife is for two now. She's carrying a baby, do you hear? Comrades, please be patient. This isn't Switzerland. Germany is starving. Well, I'm getting off. War or no war, I don't intend to die of starvation in here. Shut up. Come. Look over here. What is it? What is it? Over there.
Sergeant! This voucher is valid for 32 military rations. Thank you, Major. Sergeant, stand on your order, sir. Where's the canteen? Down there to the left, Major. Have this man escorted. We need food! We haven't eaten for days! Come right off, sir! We're really hungry! We need some bread here! How are they getting to eat? Where is the officer's mess? Be patient! I'll be back soon. Keep a guard on our train and don't let anyone near it. people and children. Come with me. Let's see what's going on. And excuse me, also some milk if you can. We have children with us. Children? This budget's for military rations. Who are those poor wretches bellowing like cattle? Falter, why is the militia guarding that train? What's all this about child prisoners? Here, for the children. Thank you very much. Who are you? I'm a Swiss socialist. <laughs> Get along. What are you Come doing on. on that train? I'm accompanying a group of Russian exiles back home. With your government's blessing. What do you mean? Why are we sending them back? Hey, are you really a socialist? Have you ever heard of a man called Lenin? Lenin? Who is he? I have. I've heard of him. At a workers' meeting in the factory. Illegal. I can't tell you, but something very important will happen soon. Believe me. Peace and equality for all. Peace? What is he? Hey! Who is this Lenin? A Russian revolutionary. Then they are socialists on the train. Socialists, like us. Ah, come on, let's go, let's, let's go. go. Come on. 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 Come on, 